and welcome. I'm Mary Lou Lipscomb from the Mas National L Middle Level Science Teachers Association. I'm the program coordinator, and I'm happy to have tonight with us um, a former sponsor of Meet Me in the Middle Day. First, um, they are going to do a really great program tonight. I'm excited to see it. I first of all want to mention that Meet Me in the Middle is um, an effort of the National Middle Level Teachers Association, Science Teachers Association, and we are the only national organization dedicated to middle level science educators. As a member, you are able to receive recognition as a member of a national organization. Um, you have opportunities in, in leadership that um, uh, at a national level. You may apply for various awards that we offer. Um, you have VIP status for presentations at the national um, NSTA fall conferences. And um, you can assist in preparing and working on Meet Me in the Middle Day at the national NSTA conference. For more information, please visit our website nmlsta.org. And now I'd like to turn it over to our first presenters. Um, here they are. Hello, good evening. Thanks everybody for joining us. And welcome to our presentation of hands-on STEM learning in varied learning environments, which we are all in a variety of learning environments these days. Uh, I'm Libby Simpson, and I'm the Director of Education at FIRST, and I'm joined by my colleagues, Tammy. Hello, I'm Tammy Pankey, and I'm the Manager of Curriculum Development for FIRST. And I'm Lori Birch, and I am a Curriculum Developer for curriculum developer for FIRST Tech Challenge for FIRST. Excellent. Uh, so before we get started tonight, uh, just a couple of, of housekeeping uh, norms for the meeting. Uh, we're we're going to have a couple of stoppage points where uh, we're going to address the questions that you guys have uh, put in chat, and we'll try to get to as many of them as possible. Um, so please use the, the questions feature. Uh, also familiarize yourself with the raise your hand feature. So not in person, because we can't see you, but uh, <laughs> familiarize yourself with the ability to raise your hand uh, in this platform uh, that's going to come into play uh, in, in a little bit. Uh, and please also note that we do have a number of handouts for you in the meeting. And so we'll be referencing those handouts at a couple different points during the meeting. The handouts will also be available after the meeting is over. We'll be sending out a, a recording of the meeting as well. So without further ado, here we go. So what has changed in education in 2020? Uh, we have shifted uh, teaching and learning drastically um, more than we have in the last hundred years of education. Uh, teachers are uh, in different positions than they ever have before, having to learn things quicker, um, having to shift and adjust things. And as a former teacher myself, I can empathize uh, with the, the environment that everybody is teaching in today. Uh, and so at first, being a youth serving organization, we definitely wanted to um, make sure that we were providing uh, the best uh, experience that we could in the challenging time that we're in within education. Um, and so right off the bat, we did want to get a little poll uh, we, we did have to pre-populate the poll uh, with a couple of things that uh, we thought would be uh, things that you guys are, are, are dealing with these days. So what uh, do you feel are the most challenging elements to teaching in a hybrid or remote learning setting? So take a few seconds and go ahead and select your choices. Thank you. 
And the reason that we pre-selected some of these choices as I start to see your responses coming in um, is basically because of the things that we're going to, to talk to you guys about tonight and, and share some of the things that we have created at first for resources. So I'm seeing 70% are, are, are um, sharing the student management with at-home learning and hands-on learning and home uh, situations is coming up strongly. Uh, about 58% of you um, feel that uh, the, the challenge is the access to supplies um, and, and continuing the, the hands-on experience in a remote environment. So those are the, the top two things that are coming up on the poll. And I'm happy to share that we definitely will be addressing um, how FIRST uh, is handling both of those challenges in order to continue uh, keeping uh, our hands-on learning environment going. Thanks for running the poll, Lori. So our guiding question is, how does FIRST uh, provide an engaging STEM experience in our remote or socially distanced learning environment. And so before uh, Lori and Tammy uh, get into those details, I know that a lot of you on the call might actually not be 100% familiar with FIRST and, and, and what our uh, hands-on learning environment normally looks like. And so I just wanted to start off first by uh, sharing a little bit about who we are as an organization and uh, the different levels of students that uh, our programs uh, serve. So we are a global robotics community uh, that prepares young people for the future. And so our programs have always inherently been uh, hands-on, uh, all about hands-on learning um, in the rigorous subject of, of robotics, uh, but our programs span pre-K, all the way through 12th grade. Uh, we have uh, three programs. We have uh, the first Lego League division, which has uh, three offerings within that division. We have uh, first Lego League Discover, which is for our pre-K uh, through first grade students. We have first Lego League Explore, which is for our grade two through grade four uh, participants. And then we have first Lego League Challenge, which is for our grade four through grade eight students. And from there, they can progress onto our first tech challenge uh, program and then our first robotics program as well that served uh, similar age students, but those are our more advanced programs. So I know those of you on the call, mainly we're focusing on the middle grades. And so the programs that most um, uh, affect those two areas are our first Lego League Challenge Program and our first Tech Challenge Program, which is why Lori and Tammy are here to speak to both of those programs that they are very uh, close to and, and are most involved with. So besides uh, the robots, the exciting part, we really feel that what sets us apart is our core values. And our core values is what also allows us to tie very strongly to social emotional learning and preparing students for the future, no, no matter what career they might go into. And uh, the two philosophies at the heart of our core values is gracious professionalism, which speaks to uh, how we treat each other uh, in the terms of competition or day-to-day -day lives um, and, and uh, in the in the the throes of competition, actually uh, being gracious in in how you perform and how you treat each other, and then cooperation, which speaks to working as hard as you possibly can to solve the problem, not so much working as hard as you can to just beat the other team. And within our other core values, we have discovery, innovation, impact, inclusion, teamwork, and fun. And these aren't just our, our ethos. Uh, we actually weave these concepts uh, throughout our program in both our guided experience for the First Lego League programs, uh, all the way up to uh, awards we give out um, for judged uh, aspects of our First Tech Challenge and First Robotics competition. So, FIRST has done a lot of work to prove uh, out our model. And one of the things that we're most proud of is the impact that we have on uh, our students. And so the, the first handout that we have for you tonight is uh, about the impact uh, that we have uh, on student participants that go through our program. So if you um, 
click on the handouts option, uh, one of the ones that you'll see there is the uh, full link to the, the study that we have um, with Brandeis University, which is a longitudinal study that has shown consistent impact uh, on students in terms of um, their sustained interest in attitudes in STEM, um, persistence to move on to STEM and college, and um, sustained interest in STEM uh, particularly with uh, females who have participated in the program uh, all the way up through, um, including when they're no longer with FIRST and they become our alumni. And beyond just checking the STEM box, uh, we uh, have a, a variety of connections uh, that we like to make to the education community through our um, connection with the uh, rigor relevance framework and that um, model with uh, connecting to the rigor of our, our programs being robotics and programming and the 21st century technical skills and the relevance of the real world problem solving that the students are doing and gaining those skills that um, they'll be able to use um, throughout the rest of their life, no matter what career they're going into, but actually solving problems while they're um, learning that are actually relevant problems to the world that they're living in today. And building relationships with both uh, each other through the teamwork, through mentors, with experts, and with our community is all, all of those things are what make up uh, the first programs and the, the power of our programs. Uh, the other thing is it is always about more than just robots. So this, I mentioned the social emotional learning and how that connects through our core values, uh, but that, that study that I referenced earlier and the impact handout actually um, goes into detail on some of those points uh, where we definitely do see um, major uh, gains for our students in time management, uh, conflict resolution, and leadership skills um, throughout the various levels of our programs. And a little bit on the design of our programs, that they are designed with project-based learning. Um, so when we say things like we have curriculum uh, and how the curriculum is used, it is always through that lens of being uh, project-based uh, learning type curriculum. Um, and not all of our programs have curriculum. They are um, in, in a lot of cases uh, after school um, and, and for our first Lego League in particular, we have a guided experience, um, but it's always designed using project-based learning. And you do have uh, this flyer as another one of your handouts. So we're gonna do a little bit of a core values activity. Uh, so I referenced that uh, hand up button earlier. And so if you have not found that, please go ahead and find that now for our core values activity. Normally core values activities would be something that are hands on and probably involve some sort of a manipulative, maybe a Lego brick, maybe some paper clips, and it revolves always around building uh, one of our core values or demonstrating to the students how they can uh, use core values or, or what they are. And so I really struggled with figuring out a core value that would work in this situation where I can't hear you, uh, I can't see you, uh, so I had to use something um, that uh, allows you to communicate with me and I can communicate with you. Um, so to ensure that we have that two-way communication. So that hands up feature is going to come in handy here. So please use the raise your hand feature on the user dashboard. If you feel that you can, you, you qualify to answer this question. Raise your hand if you are an educator or have ever been an educator. So I should start to see people. So I'm gonna have to use my left hand so I can work the mouse with my right hand. So I should start seeing people's hands in the crowd go up. There's a couple, couple more. People are finding the button. Okay, so we got a lot of hands up. Keep your hand raised if question two applies to you. Keep your hand raised if you have one or more animals in the room with you right now. So if, if you, your hand is up if both question one and question two apply to you. A lot of people are like me. I only 
locked my cat in here and she hasn't jumped up yet, so we're, we're doing good. So now we're on to question three. Keep your hand raised if you work for FIRST as the Director of Education. I should be seeing a lot of hands that are going down, except for mine, which you should still see on the screen. And so that leaves me as the, the sole person with my hand up. And so this activity is really fun because we get to discover a little bit about each other. We get to discover some of the things that we have in common. Saw a lot of hands raised um, because there's a lot of educators in the room. So a lot of hands raised uh, still when uh, asked who has animals in the room. And so this is a really fun activity that could be done with your students in a remote or hybrid learning environment or in person also. Uh, and so the activity is, and I wanna put it all out here. Um, so you just have the students write question one. What is something about yourself that you think that you have in common with most people in the group that you're in? And then question two is to write something that you think you have in common with some of the people in your group. And then that third question is all about what you think you have that it makes you 100% unique. And then periodically, you can pull these out. If you have them, hand write them as cards. You can throw these questions out um, and, and read them at random. Uh, so the participant or the student has an opportunity to share a little bit about themselves. And so you discover a little bit more about each other. So I hope you enjoyed that. Hope you find it useful. You will get the slide deck, so you'll be able to uh, check out those questions and, and copy and paste those um, for yourself and hopefully use that core value activity with your students. So we are at our first uh, questions stoppage point. And so let's check out some of the questions. Um, I think... I think we're good at this point. So Tammy, I'm gonna have you go ahead and take over because I think we have either already addressed all the questions or you will in your next part. All right, okay. So I'm going to be talking about the changes that FIRST has made due the, to the pandemic. So first and foremost, that's important in the first experience is that students are still getting to experience first hands-on. So that hands-on atmosphere just changes from being in a classroom or in a room to being able to do it in a remote setting. So we did not uh, made the decision to go fully virtual because we thought that um, that hands-on learning provides that social collaboration with the students and that community for them, especially at a time when students are likely learning at home or in hybrid learning, and it's really hard for them to not have those social interactions. So this provides a way for those teams to have those social and emotional connections with each other, with their peers and their mentors. And then for team meetings, we've provided guidance on how Teams can run those meetings with each other, either virtually or in person, and how they can do that in a hybrid setting and making sure that they follow their local guidelines related to COVID. And we encourage teams to meet virtually or in person if possible prior to participating in their events. Again, whatever is dependent on their local authorities. And then for events, we, there are a couple potential options for those teams that are competing in FIRST. So it depends on, again, their local area and their local partner, but parents and teachers can find out whether an event has been shifted to our FIRST remote event hub or if it will be held in person. And then for in-person events, um, those may change because of COVID due to capacity limitations, remote elements, or any other modifications to comply with local health and safety guidelines. But the important thing is, even if the event looks a little different, if it's remote or it's a smaller in-person event, um, they still have the opportunity to participate in FIRST sometime in the season. So FIRST has extended that season, which typically some events actually are even occurring uh, next month that a lot of those events in some places have been delayed or we also have this season extending into the summer when our championships will run. So teams will find that events are likely starting later than they have in previous years. But 
What's really important is that the main principles of FIRST and that experience that they get remain the same. So teams will celebrate their accomplishments. They're going to be forming lifelong friendships and they're gaining the experience in FIRST and robotics and they get that support system of working with their team and other students and their mentors that they need to be successful. So I'm gonna cover in a bit more detail on FIRST LEGO Leap Challenge and FIRST Tech Challenge program and the modifications that we've made on the next slide. All right, so since we've had to shift remotely, our professional development that has typically been in person has shifted as well to be a remote experience. So it is still an immersive hands-on experience for people that participate in that professional development. They get practice in first and how to run that program through modeling and addressing STEM objectives. And that remote collaboration occurs through our first Thinkscape platform, LMS. And then because we have that remote option now, we have cohorts available every month for each of the different programs. So first Lego League Challenge is a 12 hour uh, professional development and that can occur over multiple evenings or a couple Saturdays. It just depends on what cohorts are available in the, during the month. And then first tech challenge is 14 hours. So again, that could be a couple Saturdays or it could go over some different evenings as well. So we have cohorts listed on our website for November and December. And then we will also be offering professional development um, throughout the, the school year also. And it's just $500 per seat for person to participate in our professional development. All right, so I'm going to go into the first LEGO League challenge modifications. So first, I wanted to point out that we have created an entire guide that goes into detail of how to run the first LEGO League challenge uh, program for teams or in the classroom setting uh, based on COVID interruption. So definitely find this guide. It is something we will provide a link to at the end to see all the details in here. But um, some of the things that we have done for managing materials is that any registered teams can order an extra challenge set or the challenge mat through the first dashboard. And then LEGO Education has provided some great resources on managing today's classroom, including hygiene guidance and how you manage uh, distributing materials in that hands-on uh, setting. We also provide guidance on how to divide the existing materials that are provided in the challenge set and how to use the LEGO robot set that they use in this program. And we also talk about how students could be responsible for individual mission models and then be responsible for that one and think through how those materials are managed. And we have also for the content, so First Lego League Challenge uses different guides. So we have provided digital versions of those guidebooks and interactive versions of the student engineering notebooks for remote team collaboration. And that's available to the teams and classrooms through our Thinkscape platform. And then we also have first at home activities, which Laura is gonna talk about later that are available for First Lego League Challenge. And we provide some guidance on how you can have team collaboration, whether that's in-person, remote, or a hybrid setting. And then we also list some great resources that are out there. One great resource for First Lego League Challenge is the Share and Learn page on Facebook. And they have an entire unit that includes season tips on COVID and how to run remote meetings and virtual tools. And then some other great resources that FIRST has is we have a professional learning community available through Thinkscape. We have free professional learning courses from Arial on how to lead and engage remote teams and then teaching in a virtual environment. And then we also have the FIRST Mentor Network and that network provides access to experts that can help your team in a remote setting as well. All right, and then for First Tech Challenge, we also have a great guide that actually Lori created on how to run First Tech Challenge for a team or in a classroom setting uh, due to COVID. So we provide guidance on how to do it in a remote or hybrid setting. 
And then for materials, there is guidance on how to do a safety plan, what additional materials you could order, how to store, divide, and distribute the materials that you have. So how do you take that robot set and then split it amongst the students to be able to use that? Um, there's guidance provided on how to use CAD, or so computer-aided design, during the hands-off time, and then for prototyping testing ideas. And for content changes, this guide goes into how to divide the kit apart into a drive system and manipulators, and then how also to take the programming software and work offline, and then how students can download and share their programs. So some additional resources for FIRST Tech Challenge. We also have FIRST at Home activities for that. And there is a FIRST Tech Challenge Share and Learn page that has some great resources on Facebook. And also in this guide, you'll find some in-person uh, guidance on how to run in-person meetings, team meetings, and then remote collaboration. And it also includes some digital tools that are great to use in a remote setting. And uh, for adults and students, again, we have the first mentor network and those free courses from Ariel. All right, and then next I'm gonna talk about what the remote competitions uh, might look like. So first is releasing a remote event hub for this year that teams can use in those remote settings. And we rely on those principles that Libby talked about. So core values for honest and fair play. And then we incorporate the gracious professionalism and cooperation as well as the teams uh, compete virtually in their setting at home, so in a remote setting. So this remote event hub is available for First Lego League Challenge and First Tech Challenge. And it offers that in-person competition in a remote environment. So you'll see that teams can still record their events and their robot game at home or wherever they're meeting. And it is a remote experience for the teams, all the vo great volunteers that we have that take part in our events. And it does include the remote robot performance and mass scoring, the award submission, evaluation and feedback, and then video, video conferencing scheduling for remote judging. So everything that they would experience in a normal in-person event, they would get to experience on the remote event hub, just in a remote setting. So we still wanna ensure that we meet all the youth protection and data privacy in the remote event hub. So that is still an important component for FIRST. And if we see that we can transition from running remote events to traditional events, if social distancing restrictions are relaxed, that is still an option also. So that is a great way for teams that they start remote, then they can actually potentially go to in-person events. So both formats uh, can be followed throughout the season with advancement all the way to our first championships next summer. All right, so let's see if we have any questions, Libby. Yep, or Lori. and Lori, do you wanna pop back on here too? So I think we have a couple of uh, good questions. Uh, so, <laughs> yep, I can see you. Uh, so it, it, someone said, I have not seen uh, the first guidance on the team meetings, remote hybrid. Where would we find those? So we, Tammy, those two guides that you just talked about, uh, what, where do they go to find these? All right. And so those are on the First Inspires website, and there's a specific page devoted to COVID. So you'll find everything, the guides for each program, and then information on the remote event hub. All of that is on that one website. And I believe we have that linked at the very end, but that's where you're going to find anything that we release, and we're constantly updating it also. So you'll see updates to things uh, like I know for the First Tech Challenge guide has been updated. So we will continue to update as more information comes in. And that was another question um, that came through. Will will all the web links that we referenced uh, be included in the, the slide deck when we email that out? And yes, we'll make sure that anything that we're referencing here will include a references page uh, on the slide deck so that you guys have those to access easily. Um, okay, so let's put on our teacher hats. You got three teachers here. Uh, what can I do to keep my first tech challenge team connected while they cannot work on the robot? Lori, can I put you on the spot? You got some ideas? Sure, you might as well. Um, for me, that thing would be 
and I actually was going to grab this before this question came up, but so I think there's things you can always do, including prototyping at home with random things they find around their house, like paper towel rolls. There's lots of different things you can do um, at home where students can test out their ideas, even though they may not have that robot in hand. And the more they're like thinking through that and being innovative, the more they're going to be innovative when they come back to work on the robot. So that would be my number one tip is if they don't have the physical robot in hand, encourage them to think about what can they prototype at home with cardboard rolls or even boxes of cardboard. There's a lot you can do in terms of building even just with that. And the second thing would be continuing to doing team meetings where you're engaging them in core values activities. And, and there's some helpful ones even like asking them to um, build something at home with random things and then somebody else has to draw it or somebody and then draw it and then somebody else has to try to rebuild it. So there's lots of little things that you can um, encourage students to do while they're at home and still and um, still be innovative, still be engaged and still feel like they're solving the problem. And Lori is go, going to in the next section talk a lot about our first at home. So that would definitely be a, a direction that um, I would think about looking at for activities that you can do uh, with your team to, just to keep them engaged in STEM in general um, through the through FIRST as well. Um, keep your teacher hats on. My robot room is locked down. How do I do hands-on science when I can't access the FLL robots? That is a great question and um, so I think one is our first at home activities work under that assumption and Lori's going to be talking about those. So if you can't be doing the, the robots as they since they're locked up in your classroom, we have some really great activities across different uh, content areas that will engage your team. And then we base those activities on things that kids should readily be able to find at home. So we're not working under the assumption that they have their robot set at home. So uh, you might use things like Lori was saying, found materials, recyclables, or even if you have just Lego bricks, you can do a lot of building with that, of just ideas and having the kids get their thoughts down. And uh, definitely you can be working on the innovation project at this time also, and engage them in whatever resources at first has on the robot game, and you can be looking at those too. Absolutely. Um, one more from this group of questions and then we're going to move on because a lot of questions that are coming in. I think, Lori, you might actually be answering some of these in your, your next section. Um, what, uh, how many students, and, and we might not know this, how many students can participate in a remote competition? It's the same number that's on your team. Okay. That's allowed on a team. So up to 10 for First Lego League Challenge. Very good. Uh, oh, you know what? Let's take one other one. Uh, there's a couple questions about FIRST Robotics Challenge and if we'll have the same types of resources that we just discussed for FIRST Robotics Challenge. Um, and it, right now, uh, the, the, all of those uh, things are in development, so stay tuned for that. All right, so Lori, I'm gonna, Tammy and I are gonna go away for a bit. You're gonna take over. <laughs> all right. Welcome everyone and, and we will try to answer as many of the questions as we can. So many of you have asked how can I keep my students engaged um, if I don't have the robot in front of us. And so um, at first we actually designed the uh, a lot of activities and and they are on first at home for solely this purpose of really allowing you to um, pull resources and engage students in a direct way, even giving them individual things that you can specialize their learning. So it's a one stop shop for skill development building STEM skills that apply to robotics and career. So you see there, there's a menu, and this is from our website at firstinspires.org, and it's under the community tab, and you'll see it, it's at the top, and it's called First at Home. And you'll see here, if it's everything from remote learning resources to free and flexible pre-K STEM activities, we're gonna dive into those quite a bit more in each one of these components as we go through, as well as core values, coding and programming, CAD, uh, robot mechanics and electronics, as well as STEM and CTE. So if we can go to the next slide. So if we dive into these a little bit, so as you look at the remote learning resources, so this is the tab that is expanded there, there's two major resources you might wanna take a look at. And, and these are really particularly for engaging those team members and those teams at home and really helping them track their progress because you're no longer meeting with them 
one-on-one -on -one where you can say, okay, I want you to do this on this day or this on this day and, and kind of holding their hands. So it requires more independent learning. And we have two different guides for you to help gu um, guide students through there. So if you can click the button, Libby. And so the first one is a first at home uh, guide for helping students do time management. And this is a PBL guide basically for improving your life skills with core values. So how can you ask students to basically create their own little project management plan for what they need to do for the week? And there's some project management resources for you in there, as well as some reflection questions for you to ask students in terms of how they're managing their time and what they're supposed to get done for the week. And then how does that relate to our overall core values and um, helping the student guide in that way? And the next one is on a gracious professionalism check-in. And this is kind of almost your social emotional learning check-in where you're really asking the students kind of, um, you know, how are they doing? What are their challenges in, in this type of environment, particularly when they're remote, really letting them know that you care about them and um, helping them through all of this because it is a challenging time for us to all get through together. So those are two of the remote learning resources you might wanna take a look at. And um, they are pretty handy and they are meant to be used with students in a remote situation, or you could even use them in the classroom. Um, the first one on improving life skills is really handy to use uh, for that project management in the classroom as well. The next one is our STEM series of lessons that we have on First at Home. So essentially what we've done with this particular um, section is we actually developed a series of 12 different lessons at each grade level. So the first one would be in Discover. So Discover has 12 lessons that it really allows students to um, dive into using project-based learning. And it goes into each individual area of STEM from core values to gracious professionalism. And Libby, you can click through these because uh, they're animated. So that's Discover. So you can see here, there's 12 lessons in each one. So there's ones four grades, four through six, six through 10, um, all the way up to high school. The FTC lessons, range everything from um, you know basic learning CAD and how you can do CAD at home and, and some lessons to doing CAD at home and then leading up to even they actually design an escape room so this could be a core values activity or a community activity in their own home that they do to progress uh, for some of those awards and different things that you might be wanting to achieve for your team and I think that's it on that slide a continuation of six skill building. So as we look at how do I keep students engaged? So when you develop kind of a learning plan and you find their own interest, you could use these resources to really point students in those um, areas. So like MIT has a whole bunch of courses that we have listed on there as well as um, some, on, some different ones on coding, different ones from Lego. So those, that's just a collection of, of resources that really are kind of general STEM resources. And then we have some others that are more focused on things like CAD and programming. And those are on the next two little clicks, Libby. So CAD is the next one. So uh, one of the big CAD resources that we're pushing FTC teams towards is Onshape because it is completely web-based and um, a lot of different uh, platforms can use that. But there's lots of others, including Tinkercad as well as Autodesk if your students have access to that. I know someone did ask if there is CAD for FLL teams and Tinkercad could always be that option, particularly for something like the innovation project if you want students to design. As far as designing a robot, I think there are some other platforms out there, but I'm not sure if we have that one listed. So we'll make sure we get that one to you um, in the chat or in our follow-up. And then the last one is coding and programming. And you can see here, we have that divided into beginning level to advanced level. So everything from basic learning, basics blocks programming to a learning machine learning. and so. A lot of our programs are scaffolding that in within them, including FTC and FRC have machine learning in the terms of uh, image recognition, whereas FLL, you're still learning some of the basics of machine learning, but there are some really great resources on there for you to help guide students in that direction. And the last one we really have kind of to take a look at is first career readiness. One of the things that first really with this impact study that we've done, and even myself personally, I taught in the classroom for 13 years and actually did first as a classroom program for first tech challenge and first robotics competition. And the biggest thing that I saw was that impact that it had on students and how much they grew over that time. And so they really do become students that are more career ready, which is why we have so many strategic sponsors. So it's the perfect opportunity to see your students go pro. Uh, the impact of FIRST is bigger than just STEM. 
76% of students improve in communication skills. And I have seen students personally go from not being able to talk and almost puking to talking in front of a group of 200 people, uh, very proud about what they have achieved and, and what they've accomplished. Um, over 75% of uh, FIRST alumni are actually pursuing STEM careers. So we, we're developing more and more of these pathways, not only just in um, careers towards you know, four-year degrees, but we're also talking about trades and industry. Um, and those skills that students take into trades in the industry are very, very valuable. And so FIRST really does with programs that embrace uh, competition with our core values, along with gracious professionalism, it engages students in the impact they make in their communities. That connects them to the local workforce and really creates a gap for you to be able to have a pipeline of getting sponsors as well as the students benefiting from those sponsors. Um, and so I think that pretty much wraps up my section. Uh, questions. I know we have some more, some that maybe I didn't at, uh, answer yeah. or there's some more that have come in. So yeah, we'll go right back up to the top of the, the, the questions here that uh, have been coming in. And so I think um, what can be done, so teacher hat time, and then we'll jump into some other ones. What can be done for $20 or less per student and provide hands on to the students? I, I would say, uh, Lori picked up that cardboard tube, and I mean, cardboard is your best friend as a teacher when you're looking to have students do STEM, build uh, certain things, prototype, especially in an at-home environment, because that can be done um, very easily on a budget. Uh, I used to, when we were getting ready to do a project that involved found items, you know, prepare the students uh, a week or two ahead of time and tell them, you know, at home, uh, when you finish that bottle of water or bottle of soda or roll of toilet paper or roll of uh, to paper towels, go ahead and hold on to those because we're going to use those in a few weeks. Uh, and just prepare them ahead of time so that they can start building up their uh, found material supply at home. Uh, you know, and, and you can, if you are in a position or you can make some kits with some really simple things, balsa wood, maybe some wheels or gears or straws or rubber bands and you can make some little kits like that um, put them in plastic baggies and send those home with the students uh, and then you could actually use our first at home lessons because a lot of those uh, well we've created those to be used with kind of found items around the home or um, giving you other ideas for, for uh, resources that you could use if you've actually sent a little kit little um, uh, stem kit home with the students then it could be um, even more powerful um, when might local partners release the plan for events? So each of our program delivery partners uh, will be working on their uh, schedule for the local events. So you'd really just have to stay tuned with them on that. Um, if a virtual event is through the remote event hub, will we need Zoom as well? And so you, you wouldn't necessarily need Zoom to participate in the remote event hub, but to run your meetings and things of that nature, you probably would. Um, this one's got FTC. So Lori, listen to this one carefully. <laughs> <laughs> We've been using Zoom for our meetings since March. We have met regularly and found outreach opportunities by 3D printing face masks and designing and building COVID shields for a local middle school. Can we submit for judged awards if we cannot field a robot for FTC? I, I think you are supposed to do both. Ultimately, if you look at the awards themselves, when it comes to judge awards, um, they really do look at robot competition. But I think in this year, particularly, you probably could still participate in judging, even if they can't field a, if you don't have a scoring robot. Um, you know, but if there's a way to build a basic chassis and even drive to a point, and, and score in one way, you're still competing. So I think there are ways to still do that. Um, and But I do not know that they've specified in the rules that you can compete only for judged awards and not with a robot this year. But I, I think it is an obstacle you could overcome. And the more you focus on the awards and your business plan, the more successful you're gonna be overall. Awesome. Um, I have 60% of my students in person and 40% at home online. We do FTC. How can I keep online students as engaged as the in-person students? 
Unchained Cat curriculum. is your friend there. Um, and because it can be, it is a remote collaborative environment where those students can um, interact. And then my other suggestion would be, even if they are remote, do you have ways to send supplies home? Um, if you're if you're in a situation where you could put a small kit together, take a look at the um, COVID document that I created. It actually has, if you're using a rev kit, it has in a full Excel spreadsheet so you could send home what parts you're sending home with the kids and have them design one component of a mani manipulator. And then they can communicate with the rest of the kids on CAD um, of what they've put together. And so that that document is really designed to give you those tools so that you can really adapt to those different environments. And then the other thing would be working on things like the business plan and really continuing on their own skill development while they're at home too, if you can't home send home parts. Very good. Tammy, uh, this one, something that you could help out with. Do you have any resources for learning to program with the new EV3 classroom app? Yes, that's a great question. So in the engineering notebook for this season, we do list out the lessons that we recommend for the students to go through. So you will find that in the engineering notebook and we give a list of lessons for spike prime and then the new EV3 classroom. And then if you're still using EV3 lab or EV3G, we also have that resource on the firstlegoleague.org slash season page. So we do give a list of lessons that we recommend that the team go through. And then once they complete those lessons, for each one of those platforms, we do actually have the guided mission. And so we give um, a recommended uh, code for them to use. And it kind of focuses on line following because there's some really great lines that are on the mat that will get them through uh, to that uh, complete that first mission. So that's a great way to go after you complete those robot lessons of whatever platform you use. And then you can do that guided mission. And it's a BOTCHA mission for this year. And it does actually give some guidance on an attachment to build for that robot also. And I do see some questions coming in about Spike Prime. I'll go ahead and address that. So um, Spike Prime is a new platform that was released by Lego Education last year. So that is legal. Um, EV3 is legal. NXT actually is still legal if you have that. So uh, Spike Prime is a great uh, new platform to use if you're looking. It has, a, I think, a lower entry point for students. So if you have younger kids on your team, definitely think that's a great one. But um, there's no competitive advantage of Spike Prime versus EV3. So uh, you, you'll find things that might benefit you on either one of those systems uh, to use. And then I do see a question about Thinkscape. So Thinkscape is a platform that first uses, it's available to first LEGO League Challenge teams and class packs and first tech challenge class packs. And that's where they get access for first LEGO League to the digital guidebooks and other resources. And then also for first tech challenge for the class pack, that's a whole classroom curriculum on how to run that in your classroom. So, and Thinkscape is accessed once you've registered and paid for your team or class pack, you will find it on the first dashboard and there will actually be a button that just says access Thinkscape. You click that and it will go into that platform to see your available resources. And that's actually even where our remote professional development is housed as well. And we have had a couple of questions about like virtual participation. And so we don't currently have a full virtual participation in FIRST as we know it. However, uh, one of our sponsors uh, partners, Amazon, actually has something that we're promoting on FIRST at Home, um, the Amazon um, Robot to the Rescue Challenge. And uh, so you, if you go to the FIRST at Home page, that's actually being promoted there. Um, so you can see that and link to that, and that is using the Coder Z platform. So I think the other questions, there were some other questions regarding how to contact us. Uh, so this page in, particularly, in particular uh, will be helpful um, for those of you who, who are not uh, already involved in FIRST and you're wondering, you know, how, how do I get involved this year? I need supplies, I don't have funding. Or if you are already involved in FIRST and you're looking for more supplies, we do currently have a Donors Choose campaign. 
Um, and so there's, there's two parts to that. So you would need to go to donorschoose.org uh, forward slash first in order to uh, select the campaign. And then once the project is approved, there is a secondary form that you would need to fill out to ensure uh, that it is considered for, for first funding. Um, all of that is uh, something that would be included on the um, Donors Choose page. Also, uh, we are going to be choosing a couple of folks to, um, uh, from this webinar to send out a, uh, one of our VR uh, experience um, pieces. Uh, it's a, a sponsorship uh, from Boeing that we have. And uh, a couple of people were asking, how do we talk to us? So the whole education team is actually here. You've seen myself, Tammy, Lori on screen, behind the scenes, we have Faith Bongiorno and Dana Acoin, uh, who are the other members of our amazing education team. And so when you email that inbox, you get one or all of us uh, at your service to answer questions uh, education related about FIRST. And so we are going to wrap up by uh, showing you uh, an awesome video that uh, just came out the other day uh, that talks about our Game Changer season uh, from some of our favorite people at Star Wars. Hello to all Star Wars fans and future droid builders. Mark Hamill here and I have some very exciting news. Last year, through the Star Wars Force for Change Philanthropic Initiative, the Walt Disney Company and Lucasfilm teamed up with the global robotics community first to expand access to STEM programming in more than 100 countries, bringing together over a half million youth worldwide. Wow. This year, we're looking forward to teaming up again with FIRST for the 2020-2021 season. FIRST Game Changers, powered by Star Wars, Force for change to help kids envision a brighter, more inclusive future in our world and celebrate the contributions of diverse, creative thinkers, visionaries, and innovators. We know this year is going to look different than past seasons, but it's nothing the first community cannot overcome. Earlier this year, first teams sprung to action, helping their communities respond to the global pandemic, creating personal protective equipment raising donations for food banks and community centers, and even creating low-cost ventilators. Again and again, first teams show what it truly means to be a force for change. And now it's my honor to introduce you to a few friends of mine to tell you a little bit more about the upcoming first season. That's what I'm doing here. We are so thrilled to share more about this upcoming season, first, Game Changers, powered by Star Wars Force for Change. First teams around the world will explore how traditional sports are changing and how we define sports through robotics. Fear not. I can help you with that. In this year's sports and fitness theme challenges, teams will explore what it means to be a force for change and revolutionize the way we play and move so people with all skill levels and abilities can participate. Hurry, younglings. The time has come for you to build your own lightsabers. First, Disney and Lucasfilm are committed to a culture of equity, diversity, and inclusion. Last season, with funding support from the Walt Disney Company, first expanded access to STEM programs to over 10,000 robotics teams in untapped diverse communities, providing more than 112,000 youths with hands-on, life-changing robotics programs. Together, we're on a mission to inspire creativity, passion, and hope in you, the next generation of innovators. We believe in a world that celebrates everyone, regardless of where you come from or what you believe. As an athlete myself, I'm particularly excited about this season's theme and can wait to see the first teams bring together their unique talents to form their teams and become true champions. Join us as we level the playing field so people of all ages and abilities can make a positive impact in our world. We are so excited to see what possibilities await this year. Whether you're a young person who wants to get involved in robotics or a Star Wars fan who wants to support our youth, we hope you join us in being a part of First Game Changers, powered by Star Wars Force for Change. The galaxy is counting on it.
So thank you everybody for joining us tonight on behalf of the education team and FIRST. Have a wonderful evening and uh, we hope that uh, you will join us this season. Uh, have a great night. Bye-bye.